Hi, hi everybody. Uh, this is Ron, Gadget Man, uh, making this video especially for our team in Uganda so that they can understand uh, what's involved with the smaller carburetors that they're going to be working with. Now what I have here is I have a carburetor that is off of a generator that I had sitting at the house. Uh, I was going to repair it but uh, didn't get around to it. But this is the same style that you'll be dealing with on the smaller engines. So, uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is, is uh, come on in a little bit closer, Steve. Uh, yeah, Steve is my cameraman today. Here, let me let me have this for a second. We'll do this the right way. Here you go. This is Steve. Say hi, Steve. Hi. <laughs> Mr. Cameraman. All right. So, there we go. Now, all right, now, when you get to this, come on in a little closer, Steve. All right. Come on in. Okay, we get in on this. Now, when, when you get to this, they all have basically the same operation. There's a there's little valve that handles this hooked up to your cable that opens and closes the throttle plate. They all have a set screw of some design to keep the idle down. Now this is this would normally idle at one speed. Well we're going to be making the fuel much more combustible. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to take this off till the throttle plate closes. I'm just going to watch it here. One let's see it's one half, one and a half, and that's and one and a half turns, it's closed. And back there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, I've got it down to this as close as it will get. And this thing will run at a really good speed with the throttle plate almost completely closed. So I'm going to screw it back in. One half. One full turn. And then that's where I'm going to put the groove. Now if you look down in here, you can see the angle of the plate is still pretty steep. Uh, there's a this is a wide and telephoto that may help you. So step back because the focus may suffer. Okay. So you can see the throttle plate angle is really still kind of steep. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick the bit. I mean this is really thick walled stuff, so I don't have to worry about cutting through it. And we're only going to cut one groove in. So let me get the smallest bit I have. Now this is this is uh, a reduced number of bits. This is a small set that I brought, had uh, sent to me just for testing purposes. So I got the smallest bit that I have in the in the inventory. Oh, and here's my lovely new tool bag I just got today. You see, Rigid, they're really great tools, guys. Of course, if you're a gadget guy, you know that Rigid makes good tools. So there we go. That's courtesy of Chad, uh, who is our newest gadget man in Mesa. Now, we t uh, again, this is a Dremel 300, which is the lowest that I would recommend that a gadget man get, because this one here is suffering on torque. Now, what I'm doing is I'm sliding the bit all the way in because I don't need it to be out very far. Now I just rotate it, lock it down. Again, you want to pick the largest bit for the th that the throttle body will allow. In this case, this is a very small engine, so you just pick your smallest bit, and it'll be just fine. Now I turn the Dremel on. Doesn't have to be very fast. Maybe you can hear the sound. All right. Now I'm going to hold the throttle plate closed with my left hand, and all we're going to do is we're going to make a real quick groove, and that'll be and that'll be the end of the mod oh, that'll be the end of the modification. Okay. So you just take it and hold it shut. And you just cut, just cut very lightly with the bit. Very lightly. You don't have to push hard at all. And you're going to cut from axle to axle. Okay. Guys, if if you're holding this, if, you, if you're holding this at the wrong angle, you're going to be gouging the throttle plate. The right angle will cause it to just just buff it really nicely. All right.
It takes a little bit of practice. The more you practice, the better you'll get. the Dremel's wanting to lug down a little bit. I recommend the Dremel 4000 if you're going to get one. have to do to put the gadget man groove in here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to back this up a little bit off of the groove by taking out a half a turn because you won't need the speed because this thing right here is good. Just go ahead and step back a little bit Steve so you get me in there good. Alright. Because this thing right here will will be getting a, a minimum of 30-35% better fuel efficiency just by putting that little groove in there. And that is all that you've got to do. Most all of them use the same size base. Most all of them have the same bolts that hold it together. And almost all of them have the same type of throttle assembly. Uh, although the screw may be hidden, and you might have to look to find it, it is there somewhere. So uh, if you feel uncomfortable about lowering the idle speed at first, that's okay. Put the groove in right where it starts at and uh, wherever you pull it off at. Don't mess with it. And go ahead and put the groove in. It's just more efficient the closer that you can get it to its vertical position. And that is all that you're going to be doing to start with. Later on, you can look at going on the inside, but there's an issue with that because if you look closely in here, you can see that there are three little holes. Well, those are the fuel delivery mechanisms. That's, that is the air bleeds, and that's where it pulls the stuff from to, to get the fuel in. All right, So you don't want to hit those. That will change the dynamics. The pressure is greatly inside there. So when you put a groove in, you're going to skip over the air bleeds. That's all there is to it. Gentlemen, God bless you all richly and warmly. And this is how you do a two-cycle engine with the Gadget Man groove. And for now and until tomorrow, hasta la bye-bye. This is Gadget Man saying let's change the planet, guys, one engine and one person at a time.